Right, hello, I'm Debs. This is Debs Made This, and this is my Me Made Made leg. Right, so you've probably seen lots of these videos already. You know that Me Made May is a wardrobe challenge, not about making, it's about kind of understanding the way your Me Made wardrobes or the Me Made items in your wardrobe work. And it's been set up by Zoe Edwards of Sozo Blog about 14 years ago or so, I think. Um, so what we do is we create a pledge, something that is tricky but not impossible, um, and then kind of see how we get on. So I shall put my pledge here. I've got some notes because this is the fourth time I think of recording this. Um, so my pledge is that I will ruthlessly, that's the key, ruthlessly edit, refashion and repair my Me Made wardrobe. I will queue jump one or two long waiting fabrics that have been patiently sat in a queue um, and that I originally I was saying that I'm not going to buy anything but the night before last I managed to purchase something from a dish so that's uh, that's not going to happen one edit two refashion and three repair uh, the items in my me made wardrobe I will also queue jump at least two of the fabrics that have been waiting the longest in my stash to be made. Um, and I shall share with you a bit of a journey. And my plan is to do um, a roundup at the end of each week so that you don't get like an enormous video with all my mending pile in it at the end. Um, so let me know, are you doing Me Made May? What have you pledged to do? How are you finding it so far? I have been taking a few photographs and I have recorded some video of some of the editing process, but I don't know whether that'll be something that'll be for public consumption or not. We'll start with part one, edit. So um, quite a lot of people in the UK do as I do and swap over winter yes. makes. I shall put a picture of our wardrobe. So I have a single hanging rail and then somewhere a cupboard that keeps jeans and jumpers and a drawer for t-shirts. Um, but I just have one single hanging rail. and so. Um, I also quite like a jacket and so if I put four jackets in that cupboard then that takes up half the side hanging space and I don't have room for very much else. I find when it gets squished I don't tend to look for things as much and if there's something to stop me looking for things then I won't I'll just go to the first thing that I find. So in order to kind of increase the variation in my wardrobe wearing I need to have a bit more space so I swap them around. At the moment I'm working through the autumn winter stuff before it goes up into the loft and then I will get the summer stuff down. I've previously worked in both the charity shop and the clothes bank. And I know if I send clothes out of season, if, if I send a winter thing, the chances of it staying in the shop is very low because they're only going to keep it if it's like excellent. So what I do is to store. So I'm hoping when I go upstairs um, into the loft that there is at least one of the vacuum pack bags has donations written on it. The question will be, obviously, whether I can resist opening that and ferreting through it and see if I can work out some things that I want to keep a hold of. But we'll that's see. kind of my vague plan for edit. So what I'm doing is I'm picking up each garment and essentially I've got a bit of a flow chart in my head. So I'll endeavour to insert that so that you can understand what I'm doing. But essentially I pick up an item and if you love it, so if you have an item of clothing that you absolutely love, then the question is, does it need any repair? Does it fit me at the moment? And is it in season? So um, that determines where it goes next. So if it needs repair, it goes in the repair or refashion, it needs to go in the repair box. And um, if it doesn't quite fit me, I have to decide how realistic it is that it's going to fit me. So um, Meg McElwee from So Liberated did a blog and I will try and link it if I can find it. But it's about having trousers that fit you no matter what size you're in. And I think there is something about this. It's that keeping hold of things that are just too small, which is fine because we all fluctuate, fluctuate within a month, let alone within a year. There is that thing about keeping hold of things in a punitive way, um, or which obviously some people find as an encouraging way, um, as something to aim for. Um, and there's make the clothes that fit you so that you feel lovely, whichever size of yours you are currently in. So over the last four or five years, there's quite a lot of changes happened with my wardrobe. I have, if you've watched this channel for an, a while, you'll know I'm off sick with PTSD and having active treatment um, from a job in the NHS where I would wear scrubs. So 
before I went and put my scrubs on, I would normally wear something um, fabulous because I love to feel, uh, love colour, love texture, love kind of interesting makes. And so, so my interesting makes would get worn then. Because I'm no longer at work, I don't do so much um, in the day. I walk the dog. We've had a dog in the last four years, so I, I, walk, I walk a dog. The dog's nearly two. Um, so I'm spending a couple of hours a day walking the dog. And so, you know, my life is different. Kids are teenagers. They don't want to go out and socialise. So um, that kind of lifestyle has changed. But also my aesthetic has changed. So if you look back, you can probably see on my Instagram as like one part of the reflection. But obviously I was making a long time before that. But I used to make a lot of very bold clothes, very kind of bright, colourful clothes. And now I don't tend to reach for those so much. I'll have like bright elements in my wardrobe, but my the silhouette has changed. So my original, my style guide post has changed. That's one of the kind of fancy ways of doing it, isn't it? So my original words were, I think, stylish, unique and colourful, I think is what it is. And I, and I think, I feel like that needs to be um, tweaked a bit or maybe my definition of those things needs to be tweaked a bit so yeah that's going to be part of my editing process so if something if I love it and it fits me and it's in season it stays if I love it it doesn't fit me by just a little bit and it is in season it goes in one box and if it's out of season it goes in a different box and if it's for repairing, in fact, refashioning, it goes in another box. The ones that you kind of are ambivalent about. So there are things in my wardrobe, the things that like scratch me a bit um, in a in a kind of different way are things where they've bagged out a bit or the colour's gone. And and quite often I will keep those for like ones to do jobs in or ones to do clothes to walk the dog in. But if, you know, if you're spending two hours of your day walking the dog and two hours or three hours of your day doing things in the house, that's like half your day you're wearing things that are like a bit grim um because they're tatty and they're old and you know they were made like eight or ten years ago and you've worn them to death so I kind of need to work through a process of getting rid of some of those so that's some of what's happening even from this bit of me made may I'm starting to notice I have a bit of a uniform which tends to be a t-shirt or a shirt on the top and a dark pair of trousers on the bottom um, and I often make a very similar thing. I'll often make different versions of that same uniform. And that's somewhere that I feel very comfortable. I do quite like a dress. What I realised as I was going through my autumn winter is I really do not like a pinafore or I don't like some pinafores. I'm wearing a pinafore today. I'll insert a picture. This is my wardrobe, made my wardrobe. Oh, I can't remember. One of those. You'll have to write it along the bottom. I can't remember what the name of the pattern is. That's really bad. With my newest LaFont's blouse, which does not fit. I don't like the fit across the shoulders at all. And that will kind of end up in the um, refashioning box, I think, when I take it off tonight. Uh, so the other part of the edit is I have a quarantine bag. So if it's the current season and it fits me, but I don't think I'm wearing it, I'm going to try and see if I can wear those in these next couple of weeks and see how I feel about them. This this pinafore actually is a pace, case in point because every Me Made Way, I get it out, I wear it, I really enjoy wearing it, and then it goes back in the cupboard and I don't tend to wear it. And I think some of it might be to do with the proportions, but I'll, yeah, we'll go into that another day. Right, part two is repair and refashion, or part two and three is repair and refashion, I suppose. I should put a picture in here of my current mending pile and um, it is bigger because I've started this wardrobe editing phase and I have done a couple of them already I've sewn down a face in and I've put a strap on a apron that belongs to somebody else so some of the mending is not even mine um so most of them are little jobs that just need to be done quite often it's like the band on a blouse where you've done like a very narrow a very narrow woven neck band and it started to fray on the inside so I've got two or three of those that need to be repaired uh, most of which are at least three years old so yeah worth doing because they're still ones that I like and if I decide that I'm not going to keep them at least they're in good condition to pass on the other thing that I've got is a couple of garments where there's more of a repair so for example I have got these fabulous Jenny Overall I think these are from 2017 or 2018 you can see when I made them I this has been mended several times actually I probably need to have another go at it but I cut a hole in the bib pocket 
And so they were mended and it was invisible, but obviously the interfacing started to come off. But that's not the main issue. The main issue is that the zip is broken and it's properly broken. I have tried all my tricks and I can't fix it. So I need to replace the zip, which obviously, as you lot know, means I'm going to have to take that part of the waistband off and restitch it. So these are a little bit snug at the moment. I mean, they're not awful. I can certainly put them on. I can do them up. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just put the zip in and then make a decision at the end of summer. So because I think I probably could wear those to walk the dog in with a little vest under and I quite like them. So they kind of make me feel a bit happier than a sad set of joggers. We've got brass buttons that catch on the floor, so we'll do that. One of the other items that's sitting in that box is these, which is a pair of Dawn jeans. I shall put a picture in, um, and they have a thistle embroidered on the bottom. Now, these were one of the, I think, the second pair of jeans I made. They're probably five, four or five years old, and one of the legs I've managed to twist. You know how it looks straight, but actually when I wear it, I can feel it's got a little bit of a twist in it. These are too small for me and they've continued to shrink. So they're made from a really nice brushed cotton that came from um, the organic textile company. Um, and it's a really nice kind of burgundy type of colour. Um, but they are, they're too short and they're too small. So they're going to get refashioned probably into the So Liberated bag. Or the egg, loof think anyway i'll put a picture but that's going to probably one of those and the other one that's floating about is a very very old mate i think this is one of the first things i ever i ever made and um yeah it's not awful but um it has not been worn this has been kept because of sentimental reasons and i just need to it's nice fabric so i'm going to repurpose the fabric on that one so at least one or two of those will get done and i'll show you in the week's updates how i'm getting on and um, we'll see how we get on overall. And these are often things that like take don't take very long. I mean, the refashionings will take longer, but the mending doesn't take very long at all. And you feel so much better when it's done. Q jumping is the next section. So I am not going to show you all of the fabrics. I shall put in a picture. Maybe I'll put a picture of pile. I'm looking because it's just behind the camera. So I'll put a picture in of the pile and I'm going to talk about two fabrics today. Um, and then probably I'll just like we'll go into ones in more detail in other ones because I just don't want this to be the longest video in the history of the universe. Hang on. So Q jumping. So I have a book. You probably have a book as well or something where I write down the things that I'm intending to make. And now also when I do my Excel spreadsheet of my fabric stash, I put if I've got an idea about something, I tend to write it by the side. So I tend to buy with an idea in mind when I buy a fabric I normally know what it's going to be and then I often will struggle if I don't make it into that so it kind of gets welded to that as an idea I'm much better now at like shaking that up and deciding that I don't want to make that especially now some of these fabrics have been hanging around for quite a long time but there was um a Tilly and the Buttons rose address that I made in Liberty Needle and that fabric was always going to be that pattern and I love that garment. Like, I really love that garment. And it is staying. Um, it also fits really nicely because it's a needle called a little bit of stretch. It's such a lovely item to wear. Um, so, so normally my instincts are right. Um, but it's just kind of a question. I think sometimes things wait for different reasons. So the first one I'm going to show you is the poppies. Is it called Scopolos? Scopolos by Art Gallery Fabrics. So it's a beautiful... Um, jersey with these beautiful poppies on it um this is supposed to be the stasi dress by so liberated mm -hmm. is um a scoop necked dress that you can have with sleeves or without sleeves um and i made this pattern about four years ago it was my princess fiona ogre dress um we did a surprise 50th birthday party and so um the husband's outfit was sewn without him knowing what was happening uh, and I made a, a stretch green velvet Stasi dress with the wanted T square neckline. Um, yeah, it was, so that was a lot of fun. But so I never actually have made this. And I made a, I don't think I still have that. I made a cactus one as well. But I think I just need to crack on and make it. I bottled this last summer because I was going to make just a different T-shirt dress. But I think it still wants to be a Stasi. So we'll see. I think I've got three meters of that. So we'll see whether that comes to fruition. Um, a lot of the time, these fabrics are just ones that I really love. And in my head, there's like a perfect vision of me in, a, in this garment. And 
the chances of me realizing that perfect vision is getting to that perfect vision is so small, isn't it? That I think, yeah, sometimes I kind of want to he- keep a hold of that idea that I have. And so then I'm frightened to make the thing. So there's a couple more. I'm going to show you two more and then I'm going to move on. But this is a Nanny Era cotton sateen in this gorgeous turquoise. I can't remember. I'll have to look at the spreadsheet to work out when this is from. But I think this is 2018, maybe. Um, a lot of these are birthday fabrics, so they're more investment pieces. And then I think it kind of um, puts the piles the pressure on if you let it. So this has got a really nice sateen finish. And it's also got these kind of almost mother of pearl looking this kind of soft sparkle but soft sheen areas on it so there's like a texture to it so this was supposed to be a shirt dress um, and I kind of went through a process of trying different shirt dresses most of which have gone actually so yeah I'm not sure what what this is going to be but um, I would love to make it up because it's so beautiful um, and it's been sitting waiting a long time and the final one that I'm going to show you is a Liberty lawn so this is called small susanna this print and it is such a lovely print they did it in different colorways and this is not this is my second favorite colorway and i think that's probably what's caused the problem and um, i do really love it though and i have four meters of this this is supposed to be being let penny dress with the not gathered skirt so they do two versions one's got a gathered skirt one's got a like a uh, a flat front skirt and then it has like a cummerbund waist thing which I may or may not put on did it in the toile one but um I know that I made that toile in 2018 so yeah it's about time that the real one got got made isn't it so yes I've got four meters of that ready to make into the Colette Penny um and this might be the year that it happens we will see so I think that's me um, that's my pledge. What do you think? Am I going to manage it? Am I going to manage any of it? The key for me really is often just not getting distracted because I don't normally do well with telling myself to do things. Uh, this week already I have bought, printed out and got ready to sew the cashmere briarwood top. I think all oh, looks like a peasant blouse with a zip up the side and the by handle and Kim dress. There was a picture on their Insta feed. I'll put that in there which just took my breath away. So I had to buy that and I bought their bodice workshop book as well. So yeah, um, I need to kind of just stay focused and I'm not, yeah, trying not to be punitive with myself, but um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. So my plan is I'm going to do a weekly update and let you know how I'm getting on, let you know the things that I've been up to and what I've managed to repair, refashion, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, that's my plan. Um, so I hope that's okay. Uh, the other things that you've got coming on the channel, I need to do my April makes because I haven't done that. And I'll include in that my so April blouse journey because that was, that was a bit of a trek. Um, I've also had my colours done in a short session. So a 30 minute session with Tony of TLC, which was interesting. Uh, and so I have some thoughts and feelings on that one. So that will probably need to be one as well. So. Um, yeah, and then the weekly update for this. So there's pl yeah, plenty for me to be getting on with, um, and I shall try and remember to record the sound uh, and not look like the ones yesterday, honestly. You should see the video yesterday. It ended up, I was, the bottom of the screen ended up being here. I looked like that, what's that creature called? Do you remember the creature who used to kind of peer over a wall with his nose? I looked like that. I couldn't put that out. So, yeah, we've tried again, so I hope this one's better. So that's me. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're time, finding time to rest and replenish and do some making if that's something that brings you joy. And I should say bye-bye for now and God bless. Take care.